Hi, this is Dale from vhorizon.co.uk and today I thought I'd show you Device Lock and that's the Citrix product that basically turns a Windows PC into a thin client very easily. There are a number of prereqs you need to enable to use Citrix Device Lock. Uh, they are Citrix Receiver, uh, Storefront Server with a domain pass-through and uh, pass-through authentication configured on the Citrix Receiver. Uh, we'll go through each of those steps and I'll show you uh, a quick and the rough little thing I've set up on my domain controller. Uh, so if we first navigate to my domain controller, there's a couple of policies set up here. Uh, again, fairly straightforward in the Citrix policy, um, which basically has a small number of settings within the uh, within the policy. So the first setting is the storefront address that I've uh, created. I'll show you that storefront server uh, fairly shortly, although it's fairly uh, uninteresting. It's uh, kind of standard. Uh, and there's only one of them in my environment because it's just a test environment. Uh, the second one is the user policy where you enable pass-through authentication uh, and then also allow pass-through authentication on all ICA connections. Okay, we're in my storefront server. So a receiver likes to have HTTPS enabled by default. You can change it to HTTP, but it's messy, requires registry hacks and, and generally doesn't work very well in the end. Um, so I've just requested a new certificate that I've bound to IIS, the storefront server is using. Uh, and it's basically just here, the desktop lock .local. Um That's not my main domain, but that's one I've created uh, in order to, to differentiate that from uh, this test from, from my general labbing environment. So, storefront here, basically, as, as you see it as usual. Um, so we've got one store created, which is the one we've been utilizing, and we've got authentication added uh, with our configured trusted domains for username and password. Uh, which is fine, and I've also added the domain pass-through setting. Uh, and receiver for web, again, obviously you choose the authentication methods you like to use, so for this, I've chosen username password, domain pass-through. So that's all set up on that environment. So, now if you flick to my Windows PC, I've got a Fusion VM here running Windows. Just log in. Okay, so we're in here. As you see, as it loads, you'll see there's no Citrix receiver or any uh, anything else installed. The only thing I have installed is one of the prereqs, which is .NET 4.5.1. Uh, that is required as part of device lock, and you'll get an error message about no store being a, uh, being found if you if you don't have .NET uh, when you're installing device lock. Um, so device lock also requires Citrix receiver to be installed first, so it can see it, uh, and then it'll set it up. So what basically happens is if you're an administrator and you log in, you get a standard window shell and it says it's elevated the uh, elevated the, the desktop so you can see it. If you're, if you're a user account, you've got a domain user account or something less than an administrator account, you get nothing except a, a mock kind of uh, web interface view and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, a bit old school unfortunately, it does look a bit like web interface which is mm, a bit disappointing. I don't know if you can change that, but we'll try and see what happens. So. I've copied across the files that I need already. Uh, so we've got Citrix in here, and then we've got a, a number of files in here. Basically, I've created a, an installation uh, script, which does nothing more really than just uh, automate the uh, the installation of the two the two components. So I've rimmed out .next. We don't need to install that. Citrix receive. The only thing that really does is include single sign-on, uh, and then we just do the uh, install the MSI of uh, Citrix receive with device lock. Uh, you don't really need to say anything. Um, receiver, you can you know you can add stores and things within receiver, but you don't need to do that here because that's all uh, pulled down from the group policy when it's rebooted. Um, so for a good test, I just show you that there's nothing nothing untoward here. So if I go into my test user account, uh, which is staff one with a Super secure password. Okay, and we're in. Cool. So that error message just just because I've just turned off sharing on, on my virtual machine from VMware Fusion. So it's a standard desktop. Uh, nothing unusual there. You know, it's a, it's a bog standard Windows thin PC installation. So 
Let Labadoo switch back into the administrator account. Again, obviously, all things you wouldn't do in a live environment, uh, but here we go. This is just a lab, so that's good. Okay, so again, same batch file, but just installing two things, and that's it. So we'll just run it. Obviously, I think I got my switch wrong there, but that's fine. We'll just go with it. It doesn't matter. So receives installing. Obviously, not very interesting there. Device lock takes very little time at all, and then it will automatically reboot the machine, which it's doing now. Uh, so I'm just going to um, pause the video whilst that's rebooting, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so here we are back at our login screen for the Windows box. Uh, so I'm going to log in as administrator. We'll just check that everything works as it should. We should be able to single sign on to the receiver on the administrator account. Uh, we won't get the device lock settings, but you know, the receiver will test that that's actually working correctly. Uh, and there's a couple of other prereqs I forgot to mention, so I shall uh, mention those as we go through. So here's the, the uh, admin message. Uh, so it's just telling you it's going to give you a, a full desktop rather than a, a minimized one. So again, nothing too different there. Nothing exciting. So open up receiver. Brilliant. So we've got our administrator account single signed on and showing us a couple of desktops that I've provisioned out. Um, so the settings that I forgot to mention previously is in here. Basically, you've got to add the uh, the storefront address into the local internet zones, which I've done here. Again, that can be done by group policy, just to easier, ease the burden. Uh, if you click on custom level and scroll down to security, and down here under user authentication, if we change this to automatic login current username and password, and click OK to that, and we are done. Excellent. Okay. So that's the prerequisites met. Uh, so we've got a single sign on to Citrix receiver now. That's working correctly. So in theory, if we log out, go away Mac settings, uh, we log out of here. And log into our staff account. Again, the only permission this has got is a domain user permission. And that's it. There's nothing else. Okay, so we go. So that's you log in and you get presented with this uh, this screen. There's nothing really you can do. Click around, nothing really happening. Uh, and it waits to give you your desktop. Uh, you can either choose to log off to restart. The the log off obviously just logs you off the Windows session. The restart restarts the local machine you're working from, uh, not the virtual machine in the background. Um, obviously, with group policies as they are and, and log on times, things this may take a little bit of time, but. Uh, Shouldn't take too long. Here we go. It's found us, and we are logging in shortly. Here we go. Here's our Citrix desktop. Got the uh, the hotkeys at the top here. Um, reduced, as you can see. Um, so we have got a, a few things we can do there, and it's basically a standard uh, Citrix desktop. This is provisioned out by Zen Desktop 7.6. Okay, so there we have it. So if I log off of the Citrix session, I'll show you what happens. Eventually, there we go. Okay, so it's come back to this logging off. Uh, there's not much more we can do about it than, uh, than that. So it just logs you straight out the Windows account. Uh, so it's very secure. Um, so use cases, basically, uh, again, as just mentioned, security. If you'd like uh, the flexibility of managing Windows devices, uh, but you don't want your users interacting with the, the local Windows devices uh, for plugging in USB things and all that kind of stuff, then great. Um, another great use case is desktops, laptops, coming to the end of their life slightly, maybe you know four or five years old, something like that, uh, with slightly aging hardware on a full fat uh, Windows installation with all the applications and all the uh, business apps and little cranky things uh, that go with it. Uh, you just blow it away and install thin OS on it and then device lock and you have yourself a nice speedy, uh, if somewhat ancient, um, this thin client. Um, so yeah, it's really good, good solution. Um, not thought of that very often. So I suggest, you know, have a play with it. See what you think. If you want to use it, then great. Um, anyway, it's a good, little, fun little thing. Uh, well, thank you for watching this. Again, my name's Dale. I'm from vhorizon.co.uk. Uh, feel free to uh, pop over to the site, leave comments on either YouTube or my own blog, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.